From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Project podcast. I am Brad Robinson. Welcome to episode 126. And I'm talking about a very powerful story that's thousands of years old. Now, the first question is, why does a story that's thousands of years old survive for that long? And I will be answering that. You will see in this podcast. Also, why this story relates to anxiety. And I'm talking about the Cain and Abel story, the story from the book of Genesis. And I got into the book of Genesis from a psychological perspective when I started to watch a lot of lectures on psychology and specifically Jordan Peterson, who goes over the biblical stories in his lectures, they really resonated with me. The, especially the Cain and Abel story, and it clicked because Cain in this story was my old self, the old Brad who was broody and resentful and bitter, sitting in his basement eating Cheetos, uh, hating on the world, feeling alone, isolated, lost, confused. And Cain, it really shows in the story how somebody can get to a point of that where they end up going to the extreme and then Cain kills Abel, his ideal. So I want to go over this story, why it's so significant and how Cain gets to that point where he's so bitter and resentful and then he ends up killing Abel. So it's a really powerful story and I hope you find it powerful. But before I get into that, I want to go over your comments on last week's episode 125, which was about failure. Now, if you find that episode to be powerful or insightful, informative, please leave a comment on Facebook or you can send me an email at unplugginxiety.com and let me know what you think. Any any ideas for for a future episode, let me know. Is there a question you want to ask me for a Q&A podcast episode? Let me know. And I will make sure I answer those questions. Uh, Becky, she leaves a comment saying, failure and dealing with it has been a major challenge for me. Your podcast has helped me through those low points. Thank you. I thank you, Becky, for your comment. Now, I just want to say that when I started this podcast, I didn't know what would come of it. I didn't know how many people would listen or how many lives I would change. I just wanted to help people because I overcame this huge mountain. I overcame extreme health anxiety, anxiety disorder, agoraphobia, Um, social anxiety. I came over, I got over addictions and I wanted to share what I knew because I knew how to overcome this stuff. I knew, and it became a passion of mine. When I started to overcome these huge hurdles, I fell in love with the change process and learning and growing and having this developing mindset And I felt like I needed to share these tools and techniques with the world because so many people are suffering. I saw it growing up all around me, friends suffering from anxiety, depression. It's so common nowadays. It's too common nowadays. And I felt like I knew the path. And it would be a sin for me to not share. But it's not just a sin. I mean, I 
I just love to talk about this stuff. I love to be here on this podcast. I love to shoot those videos that I post on YouTube. I love to coach my clients. This is something that's a deep love of mine. And I am so grateful that I went through anxiety and I, and I'm here today talking with you. So thank you, Becky. It just means so much to me that you, um, you just write that. Thank you. Uh, Chris S says your content keeps me motivated to push through these walls. The more I change, the more walls I have to confront, but the more walls I push through, the tougher I get. Uh, That's beautifully put, Chris. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, Alan L. He writes a comment on the Groundhog Day interpretation series episodes that I did in the past. He says, really enjoyed and learned from this series. More of these movie interpretation series would be great. Um, I don't know, Alan, if I am going to do more of these movie interpretation series, but you will enjoy this podcast episode because this story is really powerful and you'll see why. So let's get into it. And let's start off by talking about the book of Genesis and and how it's over 3,000 years old, something like that. It's old. So how do these stories last for such a long time? And we see these current stories like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Star Wars, that are based on archetypal structures that have been around for thousands of years. That's why we can connect so strongly to movies like Harry Potter because they have deep underlying themes that have been a pattern for thousands of years in our culture. And so let's look at Cain and Abel and really pick this story apart because I want to express to you why this story relates to you and why this story relates to somebody struggling with severe anxiety. Well, Cain and Abel are the first human beings, right? In the story, right? In the book of Genesis, in the creation story of the world, Um, Cain and Abel are the first human beings. So that's something to think about first off. The first two human beings, they end, one of them ends up killing the other. That's the story of the first human being. So it shows you, it kind of demonstrates what human beings are capable of. That, you know, as Carl Jung points out, that there are parts of us that stem all the way, that reach all the way down to hell. That's the shadow parts of us that all of us are capable of reaching hell, right? And that's what I want to express in this podcast. That's where Cain ended up because he entertained those negative thoughts. And because he entertained those thoughts, he descended more and more into this hell, this resentfulness, this bitterness, right? So let's look at Cain. Cain is born first. He's he he's privileged. Everything is given to him. He is a tiller of the earth. He he cultivates soil. He's the tiller of the earth, cultivates soil. Abel is born second and he's the keeper of sheep. Now they both sacrifice certain things to God, right? So Cain sacrifices fruit of the earth to God. Abel sacrificed a prized lamb of high quality, of high value to God, right? So he offers up to God his most prized lamb and Cain offers up his fruit. But the thing is, God values 
Abel's sacrifice, or not sacrifice, but you can call it sacrifice. He, God favors uh, Abel's offering more. And so what does this mean exactly? Why would God take Abel's sacrifice more than Cain? Well, let's look at lamb and look at fruit. Well, throughout human history, we value meat the most because it has the most nutrition, because it has the most well, especially nutrition, but it satiates us the most, keeps us full longer. And, well, we need saturated fat for our brains because our brains are 60% fat. And our cells in our body are made up of cholesterol and fat, right? And so we evolved around eating meat. We evolved around eating meat. We ate organ meats, we hunted, and we fed our tribes meat was the primary food source. And so Abel, he sacrif- well, he sacrifices, he offers up his lamb, and it has more value because it's lamb, it's meat. You want to eat meat more than you want to eat fruit, especially living back then, right? Meat holds more nutritional value. So he offers up meat. God favors that sacrifice more, clearly. And this shows, this shows that you can sacrifice something of high value now so that it is paid off in the future, You're making a bargain with yourself and the you in the future. That's that's what this story is projecting onto us, is that if you make the best offering, sacrifice, then you will be favored by God. And so we know, we human beings, we know that there is going to be an us tomorrow. There's going to be a you a week from now. There's going to be a you a month from now. There's going to be a you a year from now. And so there is not just a you now. If you sacrifice those extra glasses of beer or wine now, then you, then the you waking up tomorrow won't feel so bad. If you stop drinking and you say, no, I don't want any more beer. I don't know. I don't want any more wine. Why are you doing that? Because you know that you're going to wake up tomorrow feeling like crap if you continue on down that path of impulsivity. So, and, you know, my dad told me something about his childhood where it really struck me was that he's not a, he's not a drinker now, but he, he was when he was a young kid, like most kids, like I was for sure. But he realized that I just don't like waking up feeling like crap. So he stopped drinking when he was young and he's never been a drinker since. Because he realized that, you know, the, 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 the man tomorrow is going to feel like crap. So it's not worth that impulsivity now. So that's what the story's projecting. And my old self was like Cain. My old self was bitter and resentful. And you see that in this story, Cain's face fell when God favors Abel's sacrifice. And because God favors Abel's sacrifice, Cain becomes envious, bitter, resentful, and 
And Cain knows that deep down that he didn't make the right sacrifice. Otherwise, why would he even get bitter and resentful, right? His insufficiencies were clearly indicated, exposed. His insufficiencies were exposed right then and there. And he knew that. But instead of recognizing that, he entertains thoughts that circle in his mind how much he hates Abel, that Abel is dead to him, essentially. And I reacted the same way towards people on social media, my old self. When I would see people who are successful, who are traveling, who are getting a place to live, dogs, you know, having being in amazing relationships. And I was mad at myself unconsciously, like, like Abel, because I knew deep down, deep, deep down, I knew once when I saw those successful people online, I knew that I could do more, I could do more. My insufficient insufficiencies like Cain got exposed. And I knew I was stagnant. And I was stagnant after college, but I, I kind of repressed that. And I continued to live on Pleasure Island with my friends and smoke weed and eat junk food and, and, and avoid going to work. And it, and because I really had a fear of failure, I had a fear of, of responsibility. I, I didn't think I was capable or able to use the best word I can in this podcast, I was able to pursue that path and overcome those challenges. And I had a low self-respect for myself. And I, when I look back, I see that I see that I used to look up to people like Kurt Cobain. I used to look up to people on those jackass movies, you know, like Johnny Knoxville um, who, who are just childish, impulsive, and they're not great role models because they're not taking on real responsibilities. Look at Kurt Cobain, brooding, resentful, uh, couldn't seem to get himself out of that, that hole he was in. And so I was attracted to those people because I was in that hole, And at the beginning of my anxiety recovery, I had to confront my ego. That was the beginning part to take on responsibility, to realize that I was causing my own pain, that I'm in control and I have, I have an obligation with my future self to get to a better place that I, it's me that's causing my own pain. And I decided to sacrifice my time to recover from anxiety so my life could become better. So I sacrificed many things such as time with my negative friends that, so I could learn about anxiety. So I stopped going out eight hours a day with my friend and I stayed inside listening to podcasts, watching videos of mentors, people who overcame anxiety and learning about anxiety. And when I learn about anxiety, I learn about myself, right? I sacrificed TV for reading at the coffee shop. I would go to the coffee shop, read and learn more. That's, that was a challenge to myself. I sacrificed my safe zone for confronting anxiety producing scenarios so that the future Brad could be stronger and less anxious. I sacrificed caffeine for tea, coffee for tea, you know, tea. I know tea still has caffeine, but not as much. I was sacrificing weed for the gym. I was going to the gym instead. I was getting out all that excess energy from my anxiety response at the gym and not relying on weed. I was sacrificing 
sleeping in with waking up earlier at six and getting a jump on the day, feeling like the day's more productive really helped me. I was sacrificing staying up until 2 a.m. for a full night's rest. And believe me, that full night's rest really helped suppress that anxiety. The you in the future could have less bad things happen to them if you help set them up for success. That's powerful. Cain is shown to be insufficient. And he could learn a lot from Abel. That's the thing. Abel is that ideal, a judge that can help steer Abel to the better, a judge that can help steer Cain to a better Cain. That's the best way to put it, right? He's the judge. But instead of using Abel as a mentor to learn from, he entertains the envy. He entertains the resentfulness that begins to consume him. And God even says to Cain, he isn't making the right sacrifices. God even says that to Cain. And I would view that part of the story as Cain's conscious telling him that he's not making the right sacrifices. And you know that. And I knew that. My old self knew that. When I would go on Instagram, Facebook, and see those successful people, there would be a voice inside me, oh, I could do better. I'm not, I'm not, I know that I'm doing things every day that is contributing to why I'm stagnant and you know, I just repress that so quickly so I don't have to confront that, that, uh, those insufficiencies. And Cain, Cain could note that, well, he, he's not making the right sacrifices and he could readjust himself accordingly so that he could manifest the good in his life to have, a, to have a more conscious awareness over the actions he is doing every day that is producing negative results for him, right? And that's what happened when I began my recovery journey. I started to have a more conscious awareness over, oh yes, I'm doing this and this every day. No wonder I'm feeling so anxious and no wonder I'm stuck and no wonder I'm fearful. It's when you start to open up your perspective, because anxiety sufferers have a very narrow perspective. And to open up that perspective, to have more of a conscious awareness, that involves facing your ego, which is painful. That's why I would repress things right away. And facing your in insufficiencies, that's painful. And Cain refuses to face that pain and is consumed by ego. So what happens next? Then Cain kills his ideal. He kills Abel. That's how far it can go. That's, that's how far Cain went. And without an ideal, what do you do without an ideal? These are the first two human beings on this planet. And Cain kills the other one. And now it's just Cain. What do you do when you're just by yourself? And there is no mentor. There's no ideal. You're lost. You're lost. What, who do you look up to so that you emanate them and push yourself to be the better you? With no ideal how do you learn? How do you step out of the known territory you inhabit? You need more than you to stumble forward in this world. You need mentors. That's why mentors are so important for anxiety recovery. You model after those 
who have gotten to a better place in their lives. You lean on them for support. Without those mentors, when you're in a time of need, when you fail, you slip back into your old destructive patterns. You need some model. How do you act accordingly? Abel was that model for Cain, but Cain kills him. And it doesn't have to be a real physical killing. It can be a symbolic killing. If you kill off the mentors in your own life, say you ignore them or you you ignore their their tools and you ignore their techniques, you ignore their advice, that's a sort of killing. Because what makes you so sure that what you, the programming that you are running now is sufficient enough to help you? Because that's not the case. You need to add and update programs so that you uninstall the other negative programs that are continuing to run you into holes that you don't want to be in. And you do that through your mentors. You do that through ideals, reading books of other people who overcame challenges, watching movies of people overcoming challenges, um, listening to this podcast, listening to me talk, watching my videos, or anybody else that you look up to, Dalai Lama, whoever, learning from these people instead of blocking them out is really important for developing and pushing yourself forward in recovery. And then Cain tells God his punishment is more than he can bear. He can't handle it. And of course, makes sense. He can't handle it. That's what happens when you kill your ideal. Everything becomes worse because you're running your negative programs and those negative programs keep running you and running you and running you further and further down into a hole. And that's what's happening to Cain. So where are you going to end up without that ideal? Without a mentor? I would still be eating Chinese food at two in the morning, watching Netflix, anxious, smoking pot, afraid of going into work and failing and challenging myself in the world to experiences that are way beyond me, I would have never have got to where I am now without coming to that conscious awareness that I am flawed, that I need to look up to people that have gotten to a better place. And And that led me out of the hole. So Cain and Abel is a perfect story for how somebody can further their decline in that hole. And and we see in this story, you know, where you can end up. And that's where I'm going to leave you on this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a comment. Please leave a like and rate and review this podcast on iTunes. Lastly, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next podcast episode. Bye for now. Brad's powerful anxiety recovery program is available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com. Recovery starts now.